Many years before the Apollo 11 moon landing, a team of NASA scientists discussed the potential problems of landing a ship on the lunar surface due to several unknown factors. One of the most important ones being the depth of dust on the landing surface. The problem was the accumulation of cosmic dust that falls to the planet. They assumed that, since the Earth has been around for 5 billion years, the Earth has been collecting about 14 million tons of dust per year. But, since there is so much movement on the surface, and the ocean absorbs most of this, there is very little build-up to show. Although, the data was accurately measured to be this amount. So naturally, according to these measurements by Hans Peterson, since the moon does not have oceans to absorb the dust, there would be a problem landing a ship, with the likelihood of it sinking. For this reason, NASA invested in several missions between June 1966 and January 1968, named the Surveyor Program, which sent seven robotic units to survey the surface. With all the images they took, the scientists were still unsure of the landing the Apollo lander would have to face. Even with detailed images of the lunar surface, it was deemed necessary to design a large enough landing foot on the Apollo 11 lander to prevent any possible sinking. The lander was equipped with four 36-inch landing pads. Peterson also stated this about what the lander might face. The dust that forms must just lie there, and if the moon gets anything like the Earth's supply, it could be dozens of feet thick. In fact, the dust that strikes craters probably rolls downhill, and collects at the bottom, forming drifts that could be 50 feet deep, or more. When the astronauts stepped onto the moon's surface, all evolutionists were shocked that there was only a half inch to two inches of dust. But to be completely fair, they did find those deep drifts of dust of only three inches. So, what does this mean? The moon's maximum age could only be 10,000 years old. Dr. William Oven makes this statement about the dust thickness. I simply told them that they would only find less than 10,000 years of dust when they got there. This was based on my creationist belief that the moon was young. The situation got so tense that they suggested that I bet a large sum of money about the dust. After the results came back and they discovered that there was virtually no dust that wasn't good enough for these people to pay off their bet. Since this did not fit a conclusion that the moon would be close to 4 billion years old. Evolutionary scientists scrambled to try to explain, not why they were wrong, but how they need to change their measurements, in order to fit their narrative of a 5 billion year old Earth. If the Earth did not have a moon, the Earth would be drawn out of its orbital position, due to the gravity pull of the Sun, or Jupiter. Most evolutionists agree that, life would not be possible without the moon. In 2014, Brian O'Brien, a physicist from the University of Australia says, he has finally solved this 40-year-old problem, how fast does moon dust build up? O'Brien left an actual dust collector device on the moon in 1967. The data was never retrieved by NASA, but O'Brien found a backup copy 40 years later, and his measurements were based not on the dust detector, but on how much dust covered the solar cells, which caused the unit to lose power. The dust detector was only on the moon, for six years. These measurements indicated that, for each year, 100 micrograms per square centimeter, fell on the solar cells. 100 micrograms he stated, equals about 0.04 inches per thousand years. His own report says, you wouldn't see it, it's very thin indeed. But he was not there to see it, he could only guess based on his energy loss. Do you know how much dust it takes to prevent power from being absorbed through solar cells? A lot. How many times a year do you have to dust items in your home? According to O'Brien, you shouldn't see any dust for 1,000 years. On Earth, solar panels need to be cleaned only three times a year because of rain and wind aids in removing dust. 
there is almost a 10% drop in power every four months, when panels go uncleaned. On the moon, where there are no environmental removing solutions, cosmic dust will cause loss of total power in under four years, and a thin layer of dust can easily be seen. As the following three images come up, you can see the results of dust on solar panels, after one year in different places on Earth. There was no fire debris dust, just normal everyday environmental, and cosmic dust. These panels displayed here clearly have, 1 16th, inch, or 1.5 millimeters of dust. These panels are operating at 70% efficiency, so it would take another 2 to 3 years before total loss of power, if these panels were not cleaned. So, how can O'Brien give estimates that, only 0.04 inches of dust accumulates every 1000 years? When clearly, his theory, is covered, in dust. The newest research that NASA has been doing since 2007, that is ongoing is observing the amount of lunar meteor impacts on the moon, to gain a better understanding of, how many different size meteors new spacecrafts, will have to endure during extended missions. Since the moon has little, or no protective barrier, impacts occur from 45,000 to 160,000 miles per hour. The Earth burns up around 73,000 pounds of meteors every day, most of them harmless. But, anyone can see with their own eyes, that the moon has countless impact craters. NASA is able to monitor 95% of all incoming asteroids, that will impact Earth, or have near misses for the next 200 years. But, what about the 5% of the surrounding sky, that they can't monitor? In 2019, a 100-meter asteroid came within 73,000 kilometers of Earth, before it was noticed. According to NASA, five asteroids that are up to two kilometers wide, will impact the Earth every 65 million years. Like the Chick Zoo Lub event, it would destroy 75% of all life on Earth. When an asteroid hits an object at 50,000 miles per hour or more, surface area, volume, and mass makes little difference to how it will affect the surface on impact. Wikipedia states that, the fastest bullet travels at 2,800 miles per hour, and there are numerous videos, where a single bullet destroys a bowling ball. So, what do you think would happen to our moon, if a large asteroid hit it at 50, or 100,000 miles per hour? The moon's diameter is 27% of Earth's diameter. That puts it at a chance of being hit, about once every 100 million years, with a city-size asteroid. So, if the moon has been around for 4 billion years, then it should have been blown away, or heavily fragmented, after 40 massive asteroids impacted its surface. If the moon is destroyed, Earth would be impacted by hundreds of meteors, in 5 minutes or less. A variety of sizes would potentially destroy, up to 15% of the population. With the moon destroyed, Earth's weather would most likely wipe out the population, in a matter of months. Super high winds, earthquakes, volcanoes, and the axis would shift causing the poles to melt, and with no gravitational balance from the moon, the days would become shorter.
Without the Moon to stabilize the Earth's orbit around the Sun, our planet would either drift inward or outward. Due to the Earth's mass, and the gravitational pulling forces, from either the Sun or Jupiter. If the Earth is pulled inward, it would only take a few months, before the Sun engulfed the Earth. But, if the Earth is pulled outward, it could find itself on a collision course with any of the outer planets, or their moons, being pulled by Jupiter's massive gravity. But, the Earth would freeze long before it reached the Mars orbital path. And after losing all of its atmosphere, the Earth would be discolored from the extreme disruptions from its core, and the cold environment in space. Without the Moon, Earth's axis would constantly change, not allowing a stable environment for any type of human progress, much less evolution, and the Earth would be drawn inward, or outward, towards its eventual destruction. Mercury and Venus, do not have this problem due to their low mass, but orbital dynamics emphasize that, the Moon's orbit stabilizes the Earth's orbit, and protects it from the gravitational forces from the Sun and Jupiter. The Bible says that, the moon was formed during the six-day creation week, about 6,000 years ago. All scientific evidence points to a young moon. Don't give in to peer pressure, that says, you need billions of years, to be here.